Although I can't really see. Oh, we are on, Biz. Hi, how are Hi. you, Biz? It's time for our next episode, episode two. Yay. So how have you been this week, darling? Um, I have been pretty good. It's been a pretty low key week for me as far as crochet is concerned. Um, I haven't been doing a whole lot, been finishing up some baby gifts and stuff like that, but otherwise I haven't really been too busy. How about you? You know, we're in the thick of grandson's um, sports stuff and end of the year concerts and things like that. And I am running around all over the place going to baseball games and band concerts and swim practices and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I don't do all of the grandson pickup, but um, I do a fair amount on um, Tuesday and Thursday. So, you mm -hmm. know, I have to work my work around it, getting the dog to uh, the vet and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's been busy. Well, life absolutely happens, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> Ooh, do I see that you have a do I see that you have a cow sign up? No. No, no that is actually no. an old banner. I can't seem to get off of my account. So every time I start a live, I have to go in there and remove it. Yeah, I know. Oh this my is, gosh, um, that's hilarious. That super techie end. Yeah, that was from last year, and I can't figure out how to get it off of there now. You know, we just have to go with the flow, darling. <laughs> we do. We do. So someday I will have a cow and it'll be valid. <laughs> then you'll be able to use it and we can talk about it. It'll be fabulous. Right. Absolutely. I just want to say that my AirPods are charged this week, which is great. Right now I feel complete. <laughs> Last week was oh dicey. Yes. All right. I think it's time for us to get started. So I'm just going to do a couple of things here. We're going to remind everybody to subscribe to our YouTube channels because that's the quickest way to get notifications for all of our podcasts, Absolutely. which are every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, because that's where we are, Eastern yeah. and, wait, Central. Central. There you are. Central and Eastern. I know, right? Yes. It's all backwards. Uh, I know. And... If you're watching on Facebook, make sure that you give StreamYard permission to display your name because we really want to see your comments. Yes, we do. Okay? We want to know who's talking to us because this is a community that we're building. So we want to make sure that we know who you are. We're not stalkers. StreamYard is not stalking you. They are not doing anything with your name except yeah. displaying it so that we can see it as we have yeah. a podcast. That's it. It's All just right. for convenience. Just for convenience. All right. I need to turn that one off. Now, our subject this week is mm -hmm. we all deal with repeated patterns in our projects. Some mm -hmm. of them are simple. I tend to be a person who designs and does projects with really simple repeats in them because crochet for me is a mindful activity. So it's what I use to calm myself down, to check out for mm -hmm. the day. Even if I'm working on something for the business, it's usually something that keeps me calm and helps me wind down from mm -hmm. the day. Mm -hmm. But there are more complicated stitches that require our attention. So we're mm -hmm. going to talk today about how we can help you remember those repeated stitches without having to continually look at the pattern. I don't know mm -hmm. about you, Biz, but it just drives me nuts to have to keep looking at the pattern all the time. It slows me down. It, it's time it just, consuming. I lose my place mm -hmm. um, half the time. And then I have to go through the line again and figure it out. Yeah. So we're going to give some tips so that we mm -hmm. can kind of pull ourselves away from the pattern a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you start. What would be your first tip? My first tip would be to... Look over the pattern and make sure that you read all of the notes that are provided by the designer, because a lot of times in those notes, they're going to put information in there that will help you or instruct you on the kinds of repeats that you're going to be looking at throughout the pattern. Right. And a lot of times it might not just be 
repeated stitches across the row or across mm -hmm. several rows. It might be a repeat of this many rows. Let's do that yes. again and yes. let's see how that, and that actually saves you time once you work through the first group. Mm -hmm. For instance, I'm working on a square right now that has, once you start, here we go. Once you start the pattern, mm -hmm. then it just repeats. Right, right, like exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, we can kind of skip, let, let's just skip right away because I know that we've got a whole list of things that we want to talk about. Oh, yeah. But as far as, uh, because you're doing that pattern repeat, let's talk about like when you're making a sweater and you're doing sleeves okay. and mm -hmm. you've got the, the pattern will tell you, I want you to do an increase repeat every four rows. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, in order to maintain or make sure that um, you are doing the appropriate amount of repeats and increases, the best way to keep track of that. And now if you're doing a pattern like what you have there, where that's, it seems like it's fairly simple to remember that repeat through. Mm -hmm. However, I mean, if you are setting things down and walking away and coming back and you're not real mm -hmm. versed at, um, you know, remembering where you were, stitch markers are going to be your, are your life. I know that's really teeny tiny. <laughs> It's a stitch burger. <laughs> These are my favorite kind because they go in nice and simple and they can close. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a fancy um, safety pin. Yeah. So using those to mark your increase rows every single time. And I do it whenever I make sweaters because I, I didn't used to do that. And so I would lose track of where I was and I would have to every single time I wanted to figure out, oh, wait. How many of these did I do? Am I at the right amount of increases? What am I doing? I'd have to go back and I'd count every row. Yep. So I learned over time to put stitch markers in on every increase row because they're going to have you do it a certain amount of times in order mm -hmm. to create the length that you're looking for. This way, all you have to and do I is count. Yeah, I don't know about you, but sometimes it's really difficult to see where the increases were. So if yes. you're using tiny little stitches like single crochet or something like that, it might be really difficult to see where that increased stitch is. So if you, yes. I'm going to advocate that you put stitch markers at every increase row so you can see, mm -hmm. because sometimes it will, it will say increase this many times yes, or this many stitches when you get to this many stitches. So that yes. helps you. Um, know where you are by marking every increase row. Absolutely. I completely agree with that. And it'll save you so much time and headache. Mm -hmm. And the, just, just trust me. <laughs> Stitch, okay, markers I'm putting this out here. Stitch markers are, <laughs> this is, this is the gospel according to biz. Stitch it markers is. are life. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know what I would do without mine. Now, I use these. These are the ones that oh, okay. I use. But it's only because I have thing. them. Right. But what I find with these is that they get caught on the fabric. Oh, um, so okay. I'm going to have to adopt yours, I think. Uh, the beauty of these, and I'm not that I'm plugging anything in particular, but um, if you go on Amazon... You can get a pack of these suckers for like seven, eight bucks. And no, I lose them everywhere. I, I have got these things floating all over my house. Anytime we move a piece of furniture, there's going to be a stitch marker underneath it. I swear to God. <laughs> it's like the coins. <laughs> it is. It is. I love it's it. terrible. Or like your, your embroidery needle when you're trying to um, weave in ends and stuff like that. I lose those the same way I lose my stitch markers. I am constantly going through those. But this is a really, really good investment to save your mind. Yeah, I might have to do that. All right, I'm going to give a tip. Yes, ma'am. Right? Um, I usually look for visual clues um, to tell me, for instance, if I have a repeated stitch across the row, mm -hmm. I look for visual clues to show me where that repeat should be. Um, I'll give you an example. Right now I'm doing a, um, a design for a blanket. It's a collaborative blanket. And I came up with a stitch that alternates 
a front post half double crochet with a half double crochet. Okay. Now that's great across the row. But when you come back, you can't mm -hmm. really see where that mm -hmm. pattern goes. So mm -hmm. I've given myself a visual clue that, all right, that recess stitch is the one where I put the front post and the mm -hmm. one that just sits in the top of the stitch is the one that goes in the stitch I can really see. So I've figured mm -hmm. out a visual cue. So I'm not constantly trying to figure out where that stitch goes. Do yes, you do any, great. anything like that? Absolutely. Um, anytime that I have any kind of a repeat, well, I'm going to, um, I'm just going to show this one. Okay. So this is one of those ones where it's reversible but you don't normally think about um, how that gets made necessarily unless you're going through it. So what I did, I had no idea that the pattern bounced back and forth from front to back to front to back. And so what I had, what I did for that is um, I'm on the front part of this and instead of, cause you would think, Oh, that every time you go, it's just going to bounce back and forth. It's not. It stays in the front and then it bounces to the back and then it stays in the back and then it bounces to the front. So for mm -hmm. myself, I created, like you said, a visual clue that if I'm in the front, double check to make sure that you have two of them in the front because the next move is to bounce it to the back. Otherwise, if you just if you just go to the back of the pattern right away instead of you know doing two in the front, you're not getting that same crisscross pattern and you're getting it all mixed up. So there's lots of times when you have to look at a pattern and create ideas in your head of how you're going to move through this so that you constantly remember what you're mm -hmm. looking for. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, I, I mean, that would, that would be my visual clue one is, you know, be aware of and what the designer is trying to get you to do because if they've got pictures in their pattern make sure yours lines up with their picture and if it doesn't line up with their picture reevaluate what you're looking at because i've had i've had people be like well mine doesn't look like yours and or i what am i missing well i mean we have to read through the whole line you know to understand what we're doing but also um watch, you know, just be really vigilant about watching that you have the same thing happening on each side. I yeah, I, I'm going to interject that when I'm tech editing a pattern um, and a, a designer has tutorial photos in or explanation photos. So mm -hmm. um, you do a certain stitch or you do a, a stitch a certain way and there's a photograph that goes with that that the instructions mm -hmm. match exactly what the photo is showing because mm -hmm. we want our just we want our makers to be able to use that as a resource and if they don't match then they they have to figure out which one to follow yeah pictures are great for designers to include in their patterns and that's probably the thing that when my my testers come back a lot of times I'll, i try to include pictures even in my test, but sometimes I'll send a test to my testers that doesn't have a picture to it. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, a picture here would be really helpful. You know, because yeah. they are using the visual cue as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good point. Let's look at our list here. Ooh, so we actually have the title as creating a simple cadence. So I'm going to jump to that one because this one is definitely a biz trick. <laughs> All right. So what, what I do when I'm working um, a pattern, I will create a lot of times silly little reminders for myself of to remember where I'm at and what I'm supposed to be doing when I get there. So I'm going to show you this one because it is this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of silly, but I've got a hill and I've got a, and I've got a valley, right? So yeah. when I'm working, I go, uh, two up the hill, three at the top of the hill, two down the hill, decrease, <laughs> two up the hill, three at the top of the hill, two down, decrease. So that helps oh me to gosh, remember. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. 
that helps me to remember so that I'm not overthinking it. And I'm also making sure that, well, once I get to the bottom and if I'm decreasing here, then, oh, obviously two up the hill, three, because I'm not at the top of the hill. So three at the top of the hill. It just helps me to remember how to do the pattern. I don't know. It's something I've always done just because I don't like having to look at the pattern over and over. But that's mm -hmm. where that making sure you're reading the full row of your of the pattern that you're looking at is going to be beneficial for you mm -hmm. um, so that you can create that kind of a cadence. You know, um, when you're looking at like in Tarja, for, for instance, a lot of times because it's, it's color play and you're changing colors quite often, but a lot of times it's just the same move all the way around, especially if you're going in the round or what, or flat, even you're creating a line of a picture, right? With each line, mm -hmm. you changed colors usually in the same order. So I just did that recently with a vest that I was working on and the, it created this swirly pattern. Well, in the pattern itself, it said to the main color is going to have four, the contrast color is going to have two, the main color is going to have two, the contrast color is going to be two. So I just went, okay, four, two, two, two. But I knew that each time I hit a new number, I was also changing my color. Four, two, two, two four, two, two, two. And I just did that all the way around. And this is what goes through my brain as I'm watching TV <laughs> and working the pattern. It's just, that's where I live is in that little bubble. I love it. You know, you could use that for quarter to quarter as well. So when you're doing Absolutely. a graph, um, I know a lot of designers now are writing, they're including both the graph and they're including um, the written instructions, and usually the, inst the instructions will say something like you've just said, yeah. main color times two, that's two blocks in the main color, um, mm -hmm. contrasting color, whatever color it is, times four, and you could do the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. Now it gets more complicated when you're using more than one, more than two yeah. colors, yeah, right? But um, especially when you've got to look across a diagonal for that C to C in the graph, you got to yes. figure out how many squares of each one. So coming up with that sort of sequence mm -hmm. would be amazing. But I love even, that trick for the ripple. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why That's I've valid. always done that. Well, I've always called them valleys. I call them peaks, but I, I love up the hill. Yeah. Up the hill yeah. and down the hill. <laughs> and in the valley we decrease. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you. you. Were about to say something? No, not at all. I honestly can't remember what I was saying. But um, yeah, as far as um, doing the writing in the pattern itself, where you're changing your colors and stuff like that, I find that extremely helpful. Only because mm -hmm. I can read charts, but my eyes, when I start looking at a chart, like to just kind of cross, and I have <laughs> I have great difficulty in looking at charts just because my eyes see it, but it doesn't comprehend what I'm looking at. Does that make any sense at right. all? No, that makes perfect sense. Um, and again, I harken back to tech editing. I try to encourage designers to put, to address as many, uh, uh, as many types of makers as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. And that's a perfect example. When you look at a graph, most people would, I, I would say a large majority of people would say, oh, you know, graph, I'm good. Mm -hmm. But that's a problem for you. So you need the written instructions. Um, I love in it when it's in there. That chart. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So I think that's important too. Definitely. All right. I appreciate Let's when see. people put the extra effort into creating a pattern that is easy to read and follow regardless of your expertise mm -hmm. because while I'm not a beginner, I don't necessarily want to have to rack my brain to figure out how to make something either. Right. No, that is frustrating. Let's see. What have we missed? Um, there's really just one left. Um, we, oh, I know. 
this goes back to your stitch markers are life, mm. Um, mm. right? Determine where the repeats are, where the repeat starts and mark that so that when yes. you start a new one, you know, you're ready for it. If you can, that's I apologize, but my dog is snoring really, really loud. So if that's coming through on the video at all, she's right next to me. And I'm just sorry. It's not me. I'm not making weird noises. It's my dog. <laughs> I, I think that's wonderful. Um, yeah, I think marking the same way, use those stitch mm -hmm. markers. They, they really are handy to keep. I talk about a crochet toolbox all the time. We think mm -hmm. of our, our hook and scissors maybe being the two mm -hmm. main players, but really stitch markers and um, that tapestry needle for weaving in ends, all of that mm -hmm. stuff is critical. That's probably Absolutely. something we should talk about um, in, a, in a subsequent uh, video is mm -hmm. what's in your toolbox. What's in your toolbox, absolutely. Like what are the things that make your projects easier? Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, what I, one see. thing I do wanna say about the repeat starts is I've even gone to the point because I, I design Afghans. So there are times when my rows, them like just a side is over a hundred and some odd stitches along. Oh yeah. You know, if especially if you're looking at a very large blanket. And so there are times when, because I have a tendency in my designing, I challenge myself. Therefore, I feel like I'm challenging other people to increase their ability. Um, I always make sure that I provide videos because some of it can be confusing. But in that, I'll always put in tips like, hey, just do the work ahead of time. Count however many that, you know, the special stitch is going to go in so that you can mark it that way you don't have to think about it you can just do it and then you get to that one oh that's where that special stitch goes and then and i'll mark a whole side like that yeah just so that well, i don't have should... to sit and rack my brain and and try and figure out where i'm at then the flip side is all of the posts i see on facebook about i'm finished with this blanket and there's the mistake right there Oh, so yeah. do I frog it or do I leave it? And that, that is absolutely a perfect way to avoid a little yeah. bit of that. I mean, there's always going to be a mistake somewhere that you can't do anything about except frog. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I love that tip of using your, your um, stitch markers to mark those special stitches. One more that I love to do, I do lots of squares because I do yeah. um, granny square blankets and I like to finish off the edge with a row of single crochet. If I'm not doing a special border on that square, I do a round of single crochet to give I it a finished it edge. Yeah. Right. And I always try, this is a perfect example. I always try to have the same number of stitches along the mm -hmm. sides yeah. that I do across the top and bottom. So, and that's determined by the number of stitches in the square. So for instance, mm -hmm. this one, I think it's 32 or something. So mm -hmm. what I would want is to have at least 30 stitches along the side so that when I'm finished with my square, it's mm -hmm. actually a square, mm -hmm. right? So I use stitch markers. I will fold my square in half like this. Oh, and I'll put a stitch marker here. Oh, there. Right. right. Okay. And then I'll fold it. I'll fold it again. So let's say that's the half. Uh -huh. then I'll fold that again and put a stitch marker here. That's really so smart. that I can. And then you know how a lot of patterns will say, um, works work this many single crochet across the side edge evenly. Evenly. Well, yeah. What's even what like that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? It's a lot of math so, is what that is. <laughs> math and are we mathematicians? Um, no. <laughs> so I will use those stitch markers to mark at least biz. I swear by maybe our 10th episode, I'll figure out which direction to switch on the video a screen. Um, right. So I will mark okay. half point and mm -hmm. half point and then mm -hmm. figure out how many stitches go between or into those markers or whatever. That's a really um, great So that's idea. not really repeated stitches, but it's, it's kind of using your stitch markers for yeah. another really important. Um, but really it is important kind of a repeat. Thing. Cause if you think about it, when you're, when you're doing that side, you are that's repeating true. a certain amount of stitches, you know, there, that is true. How many repeats are in patterns? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even things that you don't think they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't think of that before, but you're right. Let's say I have eight stitch markers and I want four in between each. It's four hit a stitch marker, four hit a stitch marker. And yeah. now I've got evenly across, which is really cool. Yes. That's it. I'm stealing that idea, by the way. Excellent. <laughs> That's a great idea. I've never, I've never (laughs) thought of doing that. And that really, because I'll sit there and I'll go, okay, so this is how many row ends I have. This is how many I have to fit. That means I've got to, and then it's math. Oh, wait. No, for me, that's like you in the chart. Like, (laughs) uh, so instead, just pull that sucker in half. So you've got that long blanket edge, right? Just fold that baby in half. And keep folding it, putting st- it's. I think so that's a that's fabulous. a brilliant idea. <laughs> that's awesome. That's I, my I'm, one I'm brilliant serious. contribution. I am stealing that for all of my future Afghans. Oh, maybe we should put that in the comment. We'll put that in the comment. Um, to work evenly along an edge, use stitch markers. To create a repeat. <gasps> Look at that. Look at us We're being so smart. smart. <laughs> oh my gosh. That might be it. It is Friday afternoon. And it's it, Cinco de Mayo, for which I am <gasps> making taco bowl. So am I. I. No We're way. Doing this is gonna sound so terrible. We... Isn't everybody Hispanic on um, Cinco de Mayo? Just like everybody is Irish on St. Patrick's Day. St. Patty's Day, right? Yeah, I think mm-hmm. you're right. Um, yeah, I I'm not going to claim to have any um, any Spanish blood in me at all. I'm no. purely um, Western European, British Isles kind of person, but. Um, today we get I, to celebrate. I have a touch of Italian things. in there, but that's Latin. Nice. <laughs> um, that's awesome. So we're both having tacos. Yes. That's probably in the rest of the world. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Biz, have we covered all of our points? I think, I think we, we did as far as repeats are concerned. Sure. But I mean, speaking of repeating... What's come back on TV? <laughs> Speaking of repeating. Well, um, a new episode of NCIS, although with the writer's strike, there may be one or two episodes and then they're done, right? Um, oh, did is you there know a writer's that? strike? Oh, do mm-hmm. tell. Now, this will date our podcast, right? But That's okay. um, this week, Hollywood writers went on strike. And wow. they did this, they've done this before. So what happens is um, all of the shows start to grind to a halt and you'll start to see lots mm-hmm. of reruns. Um, but NCIS came back with a new episode. I watched it. I, I don't stay up that late. Um, here it's broadcast at 10 o'clock. I'm in bed mm-hmm. by then. Um, or nine o'clock. I'm still in bed by then. Um, so I watch it on Tuesday night if there's not a baseball game on. Um, And this week, the story was really great. They did a great Mm -hmm. job of developing the story and putting a zinger in at the last minute. I mean, I pride Mm -hmm. myself in being able to figure out what the twist is. Yeah. Totally, totally blew me away this time. Well, that's good. see it coming. I know. Keeps it interesting that way. (laughs) It does. What have you watched this week? Oh, okay. So I have... True confessions here. We were desperate because our um, trash reality TV shows that we typically watch together, um, we ran out of them. So, oh, no. watched, yes, we have watched all of the episodes and there's a whole new season of the challenge that and that one's our favorite one because it involves sports as well as the trash reality TV that my husband loves so much. Um, but the uh season is 24 bucks and i refuse to spend that much money on a season of tv so i'm just gonna have to wait until it's either free or it's seriously reduced in price but since we ran out of stuff to watch 
and I refuse to watch all of his shows that he's watched, you know, 50 times already. Um, we started watching Game of Thrones. And so we love the medieval aspect of it. And the story is pretty interesting. We're in season two, but I am going to say this is not a family friendly show. And I, we were talking a little bit before we started our um, our podcast today. And I'm telling you, I feel like <laughs> feeling a little bit of conviction in my spirit because this <laughs> is a. Uh, this is a really raunchy show. Um, there's a lot of goriness and there's a lot of gratuitous um, nudity. Like, was it really necessary? Really? All of that was not needed. So, yeah. Um, I've already well, you know started what? kind of fall out of love with it already. My husband, of course, is a diehard and he'll watch every episode. Well, there you go. I, I did try to read the books. Um, I stopped because there were so many characters and the, the storylines were so um, interconnected that I almost needed a map to figure out who I was mm -hmm. reading about. And of course, we're not dealing with English names here. No. So I couldn't even in my head, I don't know when I'm reading a book, if I can't pronounce the names in my head, I just skip yeah. over the character names and then I get confused. Right. So. Well, and then you don't really have that connection with the character anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, you lose yeah. interest in them. Yeah. So game of Thrones, I've, I've thought about watching it, but I'm kind of glad to hear your assessment of it because that would kind of turn me off. And it's a shame because yeah. I think it's a really good story. And I understand that the graphics and the cinematography is Oh, fabulous it's gorgeous I mean it really is because my husband and I talked about it and I'm like why do you like this show and you know because we were having a con conversation concerning the amount of gratuitousness of everything in it and um he said you know I don't watch these shows for the characters because me i you know me I'm character driven I fall in love with the people Same. I want to know what they're doing I want to know how it turns out for them you know there's a lot of death so don't get too connected or too attached to anybody in this show. If you're watching it, it's kind of like um, Walking Dead. If you watched that at all, um, they didn't have any regard for who they killed. And if you loved them, you're pretty much guaranteed that they're not going to stay around. But anyway, um, back to <laughs> why we love it. But, um, he said that I love, I love medieval the look and he said when i'm watching this i'm not really and like he said i'm watching the characters and of course i'm paying attention to the story but he said i watched the background he said i watched mm. how they have it set up he said i watched the the regalia that they wear the costumes the all of that stuff is what draws him in and it's so well done i mean it is beautiful and yeah. it's on par with a lord of the rings as far as its mm. quality Oh so, my gosh. And so I understand that story, the the character interweaving that you're talking about in the books. Because he and I were just talking about that last night. I said it's like Lord of the Rings. And I said, you know, watching this and being able to follow the storyline and the character production and all of that stuff, I said, you should have an easier time watching Lord of the Rings. And he's like, Well, I've already seen it once. So why would I watch it again? I'm like, what? What? You have to watch There's, Lord of the oh Rings. My Oh my gosh, they're classics. But now oh you would gosh, understand. They're absolutely gorgeous. Oh, they are. I love those my movies. Goodness. Well, but yeah, there's a know, lot of characters. Long... Yeah, a lot of characters. But I had a feeling that that cinematography was off the charts. I had oh, a feeling. it's just gorgeous. It is. Yeah. I, I can't deny it. And I mean, the story itself is actually really well told. And that's where mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I love what's going on as far as the story is concerned. I really like most of the characters, but there are just some really nasty elements that are giving me pause as to whether or not, you know, it, like I said, my husband, once he gets into something and if he likes it, he'll watch it till he dies. But myself, I will lose my feels for it because of either the characters just it's the same thing over and over again and i'm already starting to fall out of love 
with the Lannisters and the Queen Regent and all of that business. <laughs> and if you've watched, um, <laughs> if you've watched it, then Game of Thrones, then you know what I'm talking about. Like I'm just over her. Um, but otherwise, it's, you know, uh, you just you just got to feel it out. It's it's on your own conviction, really. Yeah. I can neither recommend nor deny the show. But it sounds like you're going to keep watching it. I probably am for the time being. I can't, like I said, I it's it's one of those shows that causes me pause. But who knows? We'll see. Ask me next week. <laughs> All right, I, I it's on my list. <laughs> yeah, I um I can see the same thing happening with a lot of people with NCIS because um <clears throat> there you fall into the you fall in love with the characters, mm-hmm. and the original cast had such a um, camaraderie and the way the way that they dealt with each other but they mm. it, it was it was like if you took one piece out it just didn't work well anymore yeah and so when they started to dismantle that original team like we talked about last week it it started to lose its luster but like your husband with Game of Thrones, he's invested. I'm invested yeah. in NCIS and I will watch it till I die um, yeah. regardless. And I, I think they've finally gotten another team that feels like it works well together. Okay. They have their own idiosyncrasies mm-hmm. um, and they aren't weird with those idiosyncrasies. They, they bring their own strengths to the table um, and they interact with each other in a way that you that's believable. So, okay. and the, like I said about the storyline, I honestly mm-hmm. didn't see that twist coming. And that's that's mm-hmm. what I do during the show is, okay, mm-hmm. I think it's this guy. He's the one who did the blah, blah, blah. And, but this time I was completely caught off guard. She, she what? She did it? And it, they, awesome. they made it last till the very end it was crazy so yeah well have you had did you notice how when they were first starting to replace some of the characters in ncis it was almost like they were trying to bring in another character that fulfilled the character qualities of somebody that just left and instead of just allowing them to be genuinely them unique somebody different they were just trying to repeat what had already been successful. Does that make? Am no, I it makes that complete right? sense. And one of the one of the um, mm-hmm. one of those exits that they actually did really well was when Kate was killed, and they brought Ziva in. And yes. they, instead of making Ziva a, a Kate two point mm-hmm. they she fought against what their preconceived notions were from yes. their relationship with Kate. Um, and she fought to be her own person and she was mm-hmm. completely different and yes. that worked super well. It did. I agree. I agree. Um, I know that Tony said that part of our, the reason why we kind of fell off watching NCIS is because for about a three year period, we didn't have TV. We just got rid of it. We didn't want to have it. So we were not able to keep up with some of the things that were happening. So we kind of came in at the end of the Tony Ziva thing, not understanding anything that had gone on all those years. Cause there was no, there was no streaming devices at the time where we could go back yeah. and watch those seasons and find out what had happened. Um, so by then I was not interested anymore and Tony tried to watch it and he just wasn't all that interested in it anymore either. But um, the Valderrama the character, I don't remember what his full name is. Um, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, he's still on it, right? Is he? Okay. We like him as an actor for the most part, but Tony said that he tried to watch it and he just couldn't get into whatever his character was. And that was kind of how where he ended up falling off. Yeah, I mean, that's a subject for absolutely another day. But um, I see where you're going with that. It he mm-hmm. It was almost like he was trying too hard. He was trying to be the... Um, the comic relief and it just mm-hmm. wasn't working. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't that same sarcastic I, level that Tony had. I'm sorry. My husband's yeah, Tony and, as well. 
Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I just that realized that like, Tony's a character on the show as well. Dude. <laughs> no, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I can't remember his character's name, but, um, and I should, because I watch that show every time they come out with a new one, but mm. um, I think he's settled down. And now because oh, they have cool. a team, now that we know Gibbs is not coming back and mm. we, you know, the team has to deal with things on their own. Mm -hmm. Now they've settled into the camaraderie that makes them. A, so I think that's the hump that's we had to get over. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm glad they finally I let the kids die hard. What's that? I'm sorry. No, I, I agree with you. I'm glad that they finally, I just wanted them to finalize it. Just say for real what we're doing instead yeah. of stringing us along. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. All righty. Have we solved all well, that, of the world's problems for this week? Well, of course we have. That's our purpose in life. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, we will announce what our next episode is. Mm -hmm. um, so follow us on YouTube. We'll get that um, up in there soon. Um, mm -hmm. And our Facebook groups, we always announce in there. But in the meantime, make sure that you... Um, like subscribe and comment and follow and all of those fabulous things on YouTube mm -hmm. and Facebook. Yeah. And we just and love being here. Biz. Yeah. It was fun. I had so fun. I was it was good. It was a good visit this week. Oh, it's always a good visit. Always a good visit. Agreed. All right, Biz. I will see you next week. Okay. Have a good okay. one. Yep, you too. And bye to everything so backwards. <laughs> bye to everybody. Bye to everybody. We'll see you next week.